welcome. This is American Vindicta. I'm your host, Doug Thornton. I want to play a audio clip from what happened in the Senate today. We had Senator Ted Cruz of Texas grilling the current FBI director, Christopher Wray, over some of the recent scandals that have just came out. Once again, scandal after scandal with the old FBI. And this time, brought to you by Project Veritas. Once again, my hats off to those boys and girls that work over there. That is, man, I'm telling you, you talk about some world-shaking investigative reporting. My hats off to Project Veritas. So, somebody in the FBI leaked law enforcement sensitive material that was identifying what the FBI is now calling militia violent extremism. And they were identifying different flags uh, that accompanied these types of organizations and also the different levels, types of organizations that they thought were militias and violent extremism. And on there, they actually included a organization called the American Contingency. American Contingency's owner, uh, the starter of it, Mike Glover, is a retired sergeant major from the Army Special Forces. I believe he was Delta. Um, he was a CIA contractor, trained FBI agents. FBI actually approached him uh, to become a hostage rescue team member. And they labeled this man who spent over 20 years of his life fighting terrorism, killing terrorists, protecting our nation. And now they label him to be a militia violent extremist. I think they just I think they just took a big bite out of a sandwich that they cannot finish. Mike has come out on uh, YouTube, on his YouTube channel, on his other social media channels, talking about this uh, recent uh, round of events that have happened. Obviously, very distraught and upset as a patriot. I feel very, very similar whenever I got out of the government, Mike. And this just um, me leaning out. I know some guys who may know you, and we'll try to reach out to you, but... If uh, any of you know Mike Glover and you want to share this with him, Mike, you can come on this platform. We can talk about this anytime you want. It's time that we as patriots, we as veterans, start to fight back and stick together. Once again, FBI, put your, put your, your freaking pencils down. I don't mean physically fight back, and you assholes don't want that fight anyways. But, you know, between the lawsuits... Protesting, exposing, and motivating people to get up off their asses and to see that the real enemy of this government, of this country, is the government. Now, I worked for the government for 15 years. I know all the good, all the bad. I know how many good guys and bad guys there are in the government. I will still say there's more good than bad. But man, the serpent is rotting from the head down. And it's a hydra. There are so many different little people in there who, who ruin everything for people. You know, your operators on the street and law enforcement on the street. You got your, uh, your assets that are everywhere. The, you know, Those guys are, and gals are out there risking their lives to protect this nation. And it's not always looked upon in a fair manner. You know, it just is what it is. One of the things I used to tell my young officers all the time. You know, you loved me yesterday. You hated me today. Both days I got paid. That's how I view the public. I've arrested people on the right. I've arrested the extremists on the left. I've arrested the extremists on the right. And guess what? The extremists on the right, the extremists on the left, they end up becoming the same people. There is a, there is a, normality here within Americans right there at the center, which is where we should be not aligning with the damn leftists and with the Republicans, but along the lines of the constitution abide by the declaration of independence, 
observe my freaking bill of rights and leave me the hell alone and I'll pay you the taxes that you're owed. All right? I need to keep the lights on. I want the government running. I understand paying taxes. I don't like it, but I understand it. But other than that, the government should be about the size of a Walmart. But I'm telling you right now, the government is so screwed up, they can barely keep their own lights on half the time. They can barely keep their own lights on. So what am I supposed to do? Knowing what I know about the government and just how inept most people in the government are and just how, um, how many people are out there doing the good old boy deals, hiring their buddies, promoting their buddies, or if you get off into the East Coast, whole lot of the whole Freemasonry thing, Masons, only hiring Masons. You see that in D.C. everywhere you go. We as a nation are in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Do you think politics can really solve this problem? Or do you think war solves the problem? You know, the thing is, is war is bad politics. And politicians, bad politicians, lead to war. So there's a, a MOU here, a method of, of understanding, as we say in law enforcement, that needs to be established by we the people and they the government. Do your job. Stay in your scope. Stay out of my freaking, my private uh, life that you have no reason to be in because I have every reason for the expectation of privacy. Monitor and observe all the actual terrorism. Go after the actual terrorists. I support you for that. I, our tax dollars pays for that. Our tax dollars pays for those drones that sends a Hellfire missile up the Taliban's ass in the middle of Pakistan and Afghanistan caves. I'm there for you. I support you. Been there, done that. However, what we now have is a Rome in this country. What we now have is a Nero in charge. That's who's our president. We have a modern day Nero as president, a madman, completely corrupt inside and out. My wife was telling me, because I'm such a, a nerd for history, that I need to actually do a comparison of Nero and uh, some things that are happening. And uh, I think I might work on that now. But just to, just to let you know, you know, we can't sit around and allow this to happen because this government, I try so hard not to swear when I talk about this stuff, um, this government knows damn well who it's targeting and who it's not targeting. And this is why politicians and politics is so detrimental to government. It's so detrimental to law enforcement and to the intelligence community. L look at all the vitriol that happened since 2015 to 2020, 2021. Look at how many different people in the government, outside the government, local, state, civilian, who went absolutely berserk over Donald Trump, over MAGA, if you had a MAGA hat on. I can't tell you how many different times I saw a fist fight at protests between the left and the right, and the MAGA hat was always it. People are so stupid and selfish and little that in their own mind, they go, oh, that guy's wearing a hat I don't like. Time to get in his face and act cool and tough in front of my 20, 30 buddies who will back me up. 
One of these days, Antifa, you're going to do that to somebody who's going to shoot into your entire crowd of people. That person's called a sociopath, and they're just waiting for the day. But Antifa will learn its lesson. Uh, not by the FBI, though. No, not by them. Maybe protected. You know, I don't say that sarcastically. I say that knowing full well, talking to some buddies of mine over the past couple of days that were in DHS with me. You know, saying, hey man, been listening to your podcast, been on the border. You know, we're, we're doing this whole immigration thing. Everybody hates that. Everybody hates working immigration. Everybody hates working this mass flood of migration of people coming across with tuberculosis. I can't tell you how many times I personally put handcuffs or, or, or put people in the same vehicle with me transporting them who had tuberculosis. Yeah, I can't wait to, you know, see what type of diseases I get in a couple of years. Uh, the, the plague... MERS, SARS, Ebola, typhoid, cholera, man, you name it. The weird fungal disease that ate the skin of people and then killed them almost within a couple of days of being in our custody. Um, I talk about that a lot because that's way, way scarier than COVID. Way scarier. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're, they're calling me saying, Doug, man, love what you're doing. People in my line of work typically retire out of my line of work and they don't talk about anything. It's a bitch fest. It's, it's always, that's all we do is we complain about the politicians, about our stupid supervisors who know either what they're doing is wrong or they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground and they got promoted because of nepotism. They got promoted because of the good old boy club or because of the secret Masonic handshake, wink, wink. That stuff happens all the time, especially in law enforcement. Don't think it doesn't. I don't want to say five times out of ten the wrong person gets put into a supervisor position, but that's my experience. What's yours? So, you know, buddies of mine, the call. Man, I love what you're doing. Can't believe you're saying what you're saying. So, may I ask one of them? Am I saying anything wrong? No. Am I saying anything that's not true? No. The problem is, and this, and no dig on any any of the guys who listen to me. You know, peace, love, and crabs, all you guys, stay frosty. Uh, the problem is, is that we get so caught up within our own mindset of self preservation that we don't speak out. You know, we don't speak out because for one thing, you don't dare speak out and use your name and your title. It will find its way back to you. You don't dare speak out and say something against a supervisor to other people in your agencies because somebody always knows somebody and then what you say always ends up getting back to them. Even if it's honestly a good reason to complain. So people are intimidated not to complain because, well, hey, you know what? You'll be disciplined. You'll get, you'll get passed on that next promotion that you've been working on so hard. What they want is yes men who will shine the shoes, kiss the ass, staple the paperwork, look the other way, and say, this is what the higher-ups told me to tell you to do, and this is what you do, or they've given me the power to discipline you. And then everybody goes, oh, look at Doug. He got that promotion and he changed instantly. Luckily for me, whenever I was acting as a supervisor, um, no one ever thought that of me. Of course, at the same time, I've said this before and I'll say it again, I don't get friendship pay. I don't get a bonus for kissing the higher-ups' asses. Those people who do... And you know who you are. You're the reason why our country is going the way it is. And it's not just law enforcement. It's IRS. It's NSA. It's the Intelligence Committee. 
It's the senators and the congressmen, the White House, the Pentagon, the FBI building, the CIA building, Langley, all you people out there who originally you're going to be patriots. Originally, you want to protect the country. You want to get the G-Men vibe. And it's cool. I loved it. But when you get into it and you realize just how petty people are and the power that people think that they have in this government and they forget that they get it from we the people. And then we the people, we promote these people into these, these positions of power and they've become little monarchs. They've become little Caesars. And don't you dare say anything against them. Or they will use the full weight of whatever their capabilities are to come against you. Let's listen to uh, Director Ray and Ted Cruz. And then we'll comment further on it. And quick disclaimer. Yes, that's my children here in the background. They're fighting over something. I'll get to it later. If you don't like the sound of my children in the background, go ahead and feel free to donate to American Vindictive Show so I can get a studio. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you're a parent. Shout out to all the parents out there. All right, so uh, let's get into this audio. Ray, I'm deeply concerned that the FBI and the Department of Justice have become thoroughly politicized. I think this is a problem that began during the Obama administration. I think it metastasized with career officials during the Trump administration. And I think it continues and is even worse today under the Biden administration. I don't believe you personally reflect that politicization, but I think you've been unwilling to root it out and unwilling to hold people accountable for the politicization. I hear regularly from FBI agents, and from professionals at the Department of Justice who are dismayed that our law enforcement has been weaponized and politicized rather than remaining apolitical as it has been for the history of our country. Yesterday, it was reported that Project Veritas had obtained a copy of an FBI training material which listed various symbols and themes which in the FBI's estimation were indicative of, quote, militia violent extremism. Now, these symbols weren't things like the Ku Klux Klan or the Nazi Party, which naturally would be symbols of that. But instead, they included, rather astonishingly, patriotic symbols of our nation and our history. Included on this list is the Betsy Ross flag. Now, that's fairly remarkable that the Betsy Ross flag in the FBI's indication is indicative of violent, of militia violent extremism, because among other people who have been publicly alongside the Betsy Ross flag, we have President Barack Obama, who was sworn in directly underneath two Betsy Ross flags. But it's not just President Obama. We also have President Biden who was sworn in under Betsy Ross flags. It's not just the Betsy Ross flag. Also on this list is the Gadsden flag as a symbol of violent extremism. Now, the state of Virginia has a license plate for the Gadsden pl flag, as do many other states. I think people would be astonished to find that having that license plate, the FBI indicates that you're a violent extremist also included on this is the text that I was particularly struck is the Gonzalez battle flag. Come and take it as indicative of being a violent extremist militia. Well, I will self report right now that every day in the Senate, I wear my boots that have the Gonzalez battle flag on the back of them. Director Ray, what are y'all doing? This makes no sense. Do you, do you agree with this FBI guidance that the Betsy Ross flag and the Gadsden flag and the Gonzalez battle flag are signs of militia violent extremism? Well, Senator, I, I'm not familiar with the particular document you have behind you, uh, and I'm not in the practice of trying to comment on documents that I haven't 
uh, recognized. But I will tell you that when we put out intelligence products, including ones that reference symbols, which we do across a wide variety of contexts, we usually uh, make great pains, take great pains to put uh, caveats and warnings in the document that make clear that a symbol alone is not considered evidence of violent extremism. Uh, and it's well, but Director Ray, you don't include things like Antifa. You don't include things like Black Lives Matter. Instead, you identify patriotic Americans as suspect. And I would note there's a pattern of this. As you're aware, the National Association of School Boards asked the attorney general to investigate parents as domestic terrorists under the Patriot Act. Now, it did so because it was upset about moms and dads coming to school boards and disagreeing with the policies of those schools. Five days after that letter, the attorney general sent a memo to you directing the FBI to target parents for investigation. Since that time, the National Association of School Boards has apologized for the letter because it was so indefensible, but that hasn't stopped the FBI. In fact, you've created a specific threat tag uh, directed at parents. So let me ask you, how many moms and dads who have spoken up at school boards has the FBI interviewed or investigated since the memo from the Attorney General? Well, first off, I'll say I'm not aware of any. But second, let me address the issue. You're not aware of any? Like the House of Representatives has written you and asked you you about it. If you would let me. So please answer. Uh, Let me say to you and to this committee the same thing I said to every FBI field office after I read the memo, which was that the FBI is not going to be in the business of investigating speech or policing speech at school board meetings or anywhere else. Uh, and that we're not about to start now, that threat violence, threats of violence, that's a different matter altogether. And there we will work with our state local partners as we always have. So Director, Ray, about, Director, Ray, about, Director Ray, our time is, are, do you know how many parents you have interviewed or investigated since that, that memo? I am aware that we have had a small number of assessments, which is less than an investigation, and a few full investigations. Not, hold on. Hold so on, how many Hold, hold on. Let me finish. I, I'm just I'm asking you a question. That time is limited. I don't know the number, but that not necessarily. Okay, well, well, but let me finish. That are not necessarily of parents. We have individuals who have made threats against a variety of people. Sometimes school board officials, sometimes other okay, people d- as Director well. Director Ray, I, I will point out the House of Representatives has sent you oversight letters detailing dozens of investigations under a threat tag directed at parents, parents, moms and dads who G-men have come in because they spoke out against mass mandates or vaccine mandates or critical race theory, and suddenly the G-men show up. And this was after the attorney general claimed it wasn't happening. And so the pattern, sadly, we've seen, you say you don't know how many there are. The follow-up will be, I'll send you a letter, and you'll send back a letter that says I refuse to answer it. Let me give one another example. Recently... There was the case against individuals charged with kidnapping and murdering Governor Gretchen Whitmer in Michigan. That case ended up an absolute debacle where the four people who went to trial, two of them were acquitted, two received mistrials. None of them were convicted on even a single charge. And the basis of the defense was entrapment that the FBI, that paid enforcements for the FBI, had suggested and had incited the conduct. Let me ask you. How many FBI agents were disciplined or reprimanded after that disastrous case and the misconduct that led to every defendant being acquitted or having a mistrial on every charge? Uh, Senator, I can't comment on a personal matter. I can tell you that that case, as I understand it, is now pending a, a retrial, as I understand it. Well, the special agent in charge of that case has now been sent to D.C., to the Washington, D.C. office, and now leads the investigation regarding January 6th. Is that correct? That doesn't sound right to me. That does not sound right. The, the, the name of the individual is Stephen D'Antuno. He was, he was run out of the FBI Detroit field office. And by the way, I will point okay. out that the lead investigator, Special Agent Track, are you aware that he was apparently fired for allegedly beating his wife after coming home from a swingers party and he'd made multiple derogatory political posts about President Trump showing political bias. Are you aware of that? 
I am aware of, I think, the incident you're describing uh, and action that was taken about it. Uh, to clarify, on the first part of your question, uh, Mr. D'Antuano was the special agent in charge of the office, uh, the Detroit field office, and is now the assistant director in charge of the Washington field office. I thought you were asking about the agent who was responsible for the incident. So the guy in charge got promoted and is now in charge of the January 6th investigation. The guy in charge of the whole Detroit field office is now in charge of the whole Washington field office. That is astonishing. Okay. <sighs> so much to say. For one thing, I've lost almost full and utter confidence in the FBI. I believe the FBI is going to intentionally, maybe initiating uh, a violent revolution in this country. I think they were obviously part of it for January 6th, and so does Ted Cruz and a couple others. I think that the FBI is a political organization with law enforcement capabilities. And I think that the FBI should be roto rooted down from the GS-15s and SESers involved in that agency down to the very field agent GS-13s that just came out of the academy. I think we need a top-down and bottom-out root canal of the FBI. Now, there are factions of the FBI, like HRT, the FBI SWAT teams, that are good. But once again, you know, it's just my opinion. How can you be a good guy in a corrupt system? Name me one of the good Nazis. And I'm sure people will take that and they'll say, oh man, I wouldn't say that we're going that far. Well, I don't want to either. But the people of Nazi Germany and the rest of the world who had to fight them probably said the same thing with the Nazi party when they came to rise. I mean, if anything... Our nation actually was backing Adolf Hitler there at the beginning. Oh, history's painful to remember. Uh, well, this is where we're at. Let me tell you my opinions. First off, uh, I have two operations here that I want to go over as to why I think the FBI is just doing what they've been doing since the 60s. And they don't know how to stop themselves, like a sociopath, like a psychopath, who just wants to be caught, right? Leaving the clues behind for the detectives. A little sprinkle of evidence here, a little writing on the wall there, a little bit of Zodiac drawings here and there. The FBI has become, as an agency, a sociopathic serial killer. That's the mindset. How can you be entrusted with so much power? The most power. And abuse it so willfully. But once again, this is the realm of politics. You got to understand the way politicians wield the weapon that is the government. The law is the shield. The sword is the law enforcement. I don't want to say it like that. I spent my entire adult career working for the government, carrying the sword. Proud of what I did. Until one day, I saw the direction of the government, and I said, I can't be proud of this anymore. And I won't be caught up in this. Anybody who is still currently in the government, listening to my voice right now, God be with you. I hope you can keep your head in the sand under your desk long enough to survive, to get your retirement and your pension. And I hope, like what you hope, that you'll make it to the end of your career and they'll just leave you alone and you'll phase out of the memory and you'll never be considered a problem. Just remember, don't, <laughs> Don't fly the Gatson flag. 
the Gonzalez flag, the American flag, a Second Amendment flag, a school punisher flag, the Betsy Ross flag, don't belong to any group that is considered a militia, even though within the Second Amendment it is your right to form a militia and be part of a militia. Just remember the way our American government works is that we're not supposed to be intimidated. We're not supposed to be uh, kowtowed into, pressured into positions. This is supposed to be a free country, but we have allowed the corrupt to rule it. So it is up to we, the people, to root out that evil and to do something about it. Now I say we vote. We speak with our feet. We vote with our dollars. Other people will grab guns and they'll take other more nefarious routes. Some people who already have, I guess you could say, uh, severe mental issues, paranoid, schizophrenic, they're the ones who, you know, occasionally uh, go on the mass killing sprees. Well, you know, if our government didn't do X, Y, and Z, I wouldn't have to do X, Y, and Z. I don't excuse that. I'm saying it's a byproduct of it. It happens. And law enforcement, that's one of the things that we always honestly thought about the most was the lone wolf attack because you never know when it's going to happen. I'd rather it be the terrorist attack. At least then we know who we're fighting. Speaking about knowing who you fight. Do you consider yourself to be a domestic terrorist? Did you, do you consider yourself to be a militia violent extremist? Well, if you do, then I implore you to go to the FBI.gov and turn yourself in. Because that's what a, a good, honest person would do, wouldn't they? They turn themselves in. If you go to the FBI.gov, you can see the 10 most wanted fugitives of America. You can see current fugitives. They even have a little uh, extra page about the capital violence and a 1 800 number to call. 1 800 tell on your buddy if you showed up at the Capitol. They got a uh, page over terrorism. Kidnappings and missing persons, parental kidnappings. You know, what's funny is whenever I click on this thing called terrorism and I look at all these people on here, I've known for years and years and years I've been on this list. Uh, I don't see any of them, any of them with the, uh, the Punisher flag or with the Betsy Ross flag or, or you know the Thin Blue Line flag or the Second Amendment. Uh, strange how I don't see any of that. What I see is a lot of Muhammad, uh, here, here's a Jamal, here's a Haji, here's a Ahmed, here's a, uh, a Rahman, Abdullah, Saif, Ahmed, Saeed, kidnappers of Caitlin Coleman, Jihad, Siran, Mustafa, there, George Edward Wright, there's another good one. Josephine Sunshine Overraker, Sherry Levine Dalton, Catherine Mary Kirkow, Ishmael Muslim Ali, Frederick Burt. You know, I see a lot of people that I've seen for a long time. Sheikh Amnullah, Amir El Mahdi, Fakir bin Abdelaziz Basara. I remember that guy whenever he got put on there. Uh, Abdullah Arimi. Oh, here's one that's uh, no longer there. Ayam Al Zawahiri. A lot of Islamic terrorism. Hmm. Strange. Islamic terrorism all over the place. Yet, I, I click on domestic terrorism. Once again, I don't. I don't see anything about violent militias. Hijacking of American flight line, uh, American Airlines Flight 625. That would be a Mr. Henry 
Ambrose Henry Montfort. You know, I'm not seeing all the Patriots. So if it's so dire to literally just completely change from the war on terror uh, and the and the war against uh, radical Islamic jihadists to this domestic violent extremism, hey man, FBI, you need to update your, your most wanted terrorists and your most wanted fugitives. You know, this is the thing. It, the FBI is just is turned into a sham. And it's a damn shame. If you go on to the, uh, the capital attack portion, you'll then be rerouted to the United States Attorney Office of the District of Columbia. And you'll see all the different people who have been arrested and charged thus far for the capital breaches. Let's just scroll down real quick and hear what the most common charges are. All right. And these charges for these dastardly civilians, they are the real problem. They are the real threat. These are the common type of crimes that we see from these violent domestic extremists and these militia violent extremists. Listen to these, the, these, some of the most dangerous men and women of the world that the FBI caught. Listen to what they got charged for. Entering and remaining in a restricted building. Disorderly and disruptive conduct, uh, conduct in a restricted building. Violent entry and disorderly conduct in a Capitol building. Parading. Demonstrating or picketing in a Capitol building. And when they say violent, by the way, that's so, so egregiously overused. They were let in. How many different videos do we have to see where they were let in? Hey, anybody who was out there fighting with the cops, I don't care if you, if you were pro-Jan 6 or you're not, Okay, but if you're fighting with the cops and, you know, even if the FBI is leading it and Antifa is leading it, oh, and four busloads of Fort Bragg's U.S. Army psychological operations soldiers are in the midst. Guys, if you get if you punch a cop in the face, you deserve to get punched back and arrested. Sorry, I draw the line. It's a thin blue line. It's not very liked but it's the most constitutional thing that we have is to be completely biased, separating ourselves from the party, standing on the law. However, comma, when you completely abuse law enforcement, spit in the face of the American people with the stealing of a presidential election, when you lock down everybody for a year or two, Ruin lives, people commit suicide, divorces happen. People are losing their jobs left and right. And then you take away the pipeline, which was tens of thousands of jobs that people have been waiting on. You kill our industry. My electric bill is $840 this month. Last month, it was $790. I'm doing nothing different than I did the months prior or the years prior. My electric bill has never been over $400. And I expect that whenever everybody is using electricity to cool their homes at the same time and it's creating a real you know drag upon the infrastructure. Roger, I got it. Don't like it, but I got it. But we could not sustain $800. And I got buddies of mine in Arkansas. $600. And you know what they blame it on? I was, I was looking on it last night. Me and Dave Hodges were talking about it. I came unglued last night about it. This, this is what this is the reason why the Texas grid uh, is being so impacted. 
What causes high electricity rates in Texas? Increasing demand for electricity from a growing population. Uh, yeah, a growing population. Yeah, that's called mass migration. More stringent environmental regulations. That's Biden. All right, that's Biden shutting down natural gas and fracking oil plants. Trying to make everything go to a green, new green deal. Your new green deal means more money for them. That's the new green that they want. They want your new money. Costs associated with repairs, maintenance, and improvements of transmission systems. Hey, you know what? I'll pay for that. I'll fork over the money for that. I want my power lines to be as good and as efficient as possible. I want my grid to be hardened. I'll pay the extra, you know, 10 cents per kilowatt. Extreme weather conditions causing spikes in demand for electricity. Okay. I understand. Can't help that. But at the same time, you jackasses should be well prepared. Well prepared. You're the government. You should have been well prepared for any extreme weather conditions or costs that would be associated with repairs and maintenance and improvements of transmission lines. And you shouldn't have your stupid-ass lobbyist pushing for solar panels across the entire United States Because you know for a fact, all you who get kickbacks, that these stringent environmental regulations are lobbied for by companies who then pay you in the stock market. And the increasing demand for electricity from a growing population, uh, close the border. Growing population dies immediately. All my buddies in DHS are on the border again right now for the next couple of months because there are tens of thousands, tens of tens of thousands of people coming across the border. And we don't have an answer for it. Oh, yeah, I forgot this one. Electricity providers are increasing your cost per month Adjusting for the inflation. So, is that your fault? All you listening to me right now, who also are under the pain and guise by the increasing of your electric bill, is it your fault that the country is in an inflation? I'm not the one who gave uh, $67 billion to Ukraine. I'm not the one who shut down the... uh, economic growth of our country. I'm not the one who put on stringent environmental regulations. Joe Biden did that. Joe Biden's administration did that. Barack Obama did that. Trump tried to alleviate it. God bless him for it. Tried. Didn't work, but he tried. I know some of you predate me a little bit, but I remember when I was in high school when gas was still under a dollar. It was like 89 cents. I filled up my car two days ago. It was 469. We can't sustain this, America. A corrupt government does this. An out of control Nero Roman government does this. Taxes the people till they can't live and then says, here's bread and circus. Or should I say, uh, uh, trannies and athletics. Enjoy. Here's some more porn. Here's some more alcohol. Oh, don't worry, though. We're going to alleviate the stress of the nation. We're working on legalizing marijuana. That will take care of everything. They don't give you solutions. Has anyone else caught on yet? Weed is not a solution. If you want to smoke weed, go to a state where they sell it. If you want to get drunk, go home and get drunk. I don't care. However, when my government says that, oh, well, these are our options. 
Okay, now I do care because I pay for you assholes to figure out the big think tanks that are up there in D.C. to figure this out so that uh, my money for Social Security when I get older is going to be there. Or maybe, maybe, just maybe, to fix our aging, crumbling infrastructure. Or how about to actually investigate fraud? Or actually investigate, with a criminal application to this, people who are thwarting the government, in the government. But they don't, because... The opposition controls the Department of Justice, which controls every avenue of prosecution in this country. I'm going to get off my soapbox for a second, and I'm going to get back on it and talk to you about two operations. Now, you can actually find this in the vault dot fbi dot gov but hey uh big middle finger to you fbi screw you we're not going back to your website i honestly think wikipedia has more standing than the fbi at this point unreal so let's talk about cointel pro and then operation chaos Cointel Pro, uh, I've gone over it before, I'll go over it again. And then Operation Chaos is uh, domestic spying by the CIA. So, uh, counterintelligence program started for the FBI, started in 1956 and ended around 1971. Uh, if you notice the time frame of a lot of the incidents that I cover in the United States, between the years of 1950 to 1970, 80s, is the time frame of right after Operation Paperclip, which started in 48, and then we started to see the real applications within our government for science and technology and law enforcement and military. Uh, that started to occur almost directly within the early 50s. So this 1956 to 71 really should not surprise me or anyone else that is the, the point in time when the United States government, the corruption, really dug in there, right there at that time. And maybe because we brought Nazis over. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just an educated guess of mine. But let's go over this. 1956 to 71, there was a series of covert and illegal projects that were actively conducted by the United States Federal Bureau of Instigation. You don't get the term investigation anymore, FBI. And the FBI aimed at surveilling, infiltrating, discrediting, and disrupting domestic American political organizations. Follow me here. And recall everything that you just heard between Christopher Ray and Ted Cruz. Okay. The FBI records show that COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program, its resources targeted groups and individuals the FBI deemed subversive. Subversive. Domestic violent extremist. Militia violent extremist subversive groups, including feminist organizations, the Communist Party of the USA. Can you imagine that at one point in time that the FBI actually investigated communism because we had a Communist Party of the USA in this country? Oh, yeah. Anti-Vietnam War organizers, activists of the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power Movement, that's Martin Luther King Jr., the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X, Black Panther Party. Environmentalists and animal rights organizations. So that would have been ELF, uh, the Environmental Liberation Front. I always forget theirs. And then like ELF and ALF. Uh, anyways, both are a bunch of crazy hippies. 
And then the American Indian Movement. Where are you at, Native Americans? Why aren't you upset? Independence moving uh, movements, including Puerto Rican independence groups such as the Young Lords and the Puerto Rican Socialist Party. A variety of organizations that were part of the broader New Left and far-right groups such as the Ku Klux Klan and the National States Rights Party. Both National States Rights Party, like, was legitimately Nazi. Ku Klux Klan, Democrat. Why the hell do we keep labeling this as a far-right group? It was a Democratic established terror organization from the 1800s. Adolf Hitler himself admired the, the Ku Klux Klan so much from the Democratic Party that the mindset and the ideology of it is what actually helped to influence his Naziistic image and the SS and the stormtroopers. Oh, Robert Byrd, by the way. Can't forget this. Robert Byrd. I uh, think he was like a, se a senior majority leader or something. Uh, Democrat, congressman, senator. When he died, Hillary Clinton gave his eulogy and said that that was her mentor. He was a grand cyclops for the Ku Klux Klan. But what do I know, right? In 1971 in San Diego, the FBI financed armed and controlled an extreme right-wing group of former members of the Minutemen anti-communist paramilitary organization, transforming it into the group that is called the Secret Army Organization that targeted groups, activists, and leaders involved in the anti-war movement using both intimidation and violent acts. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Does that sound familiar to anybody else? The FBI used covert operations against domestic political groups since its very inception. However, covert operations under the official COINTELPRO label took place between 1956 and 71. Many of these tactics that were used in COINTELPRO are alleged to have seen continued use, including discrediting targets through psychological warfare, smearing individuals and groups using forged documents by planning false reports in the media, harassment, wrongful imprisonment, illegal violence, even assassinations. According to a Senate report, the FBI's motivation was protecting national security, preventing violence, and maintaining the existence of social and political order. That's not your job, FBI. Social and political order? Does, does anyone else think the fake Russia dossier investigation for four years into Donald Trump was promoting social and political order? or maintaining the existence of it, or preventing violence, or protecting national security? <laughs> I think not. Beginning in 1969, leaders of the Black Panther Party were targeted by agents of COINTELPRO and neutralized. Quote, When you hear the word neutralized, that means wet work. Assassinations. They were assassinated, they were imprisoned, publicly humiliated, or falsely charged with crimes. Sound like January 6th yet? Some of the Black Panthers were targeted include Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, Zaid Shakur, Geronimo Pratt, Marshall Conway, and others. Common tactics used by COINTELPRO were perjury, witness harassment, witness intimidation, and withholding of exculpatory evidence. A very common tactic from a very corrupt FBI. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover. He issued the directives governing 
COINTELPRO, ordering the FBI agents to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the activities of these movements and especially their leaders. Under Edgar Hoover, the agents in charge of COINTELPRO, which was uh, William C. Sullivan, Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, personally authorized some of these programs, given written approval for limited wiretapping of Martin Luther King's phones on a trial basis for a month or so. And Hoover extended the clearance so his men were unshackled to look for evidence in any areas of Martin Luther King's life that they deemed worthy. That's your FBI. That is your FBI. And I I don't, maybe I'm wrong when I say this, but I don't thank you for your service. I used to get that all the time when I was in law enforcement. Makes you feel good, you know. Um, but I am no longer extending that to the FBI. Okay, moving on. Let's listen to one more really cheerful thing. It's called Operation Chaos. Now, the CIA had a program called Operation Chaos that was used to spy upon Americans. Uh, This is coming to you from grunge.com. The CIA has engaged in so much illegal and absurdist activity that sometimes it's difficult to discern fact from conspiracy. Did the CIA experiment with LSD as a mind-controlled substance? Absolutely, they did. Did the CIA create HIV or AIDS? Uh, I don't know. That was actually a disinformation campaign by the KGB, nicknamed Operation Infection, uh, by historian Thomas Bogart, so probably not. One of the illegal things that the CIA did do is engage in domestic espionage and target people in the United States for it. At the very least, this activity occurred from 1964 to 1974. But actually, the start and dates are kind of foggy. Intelligence was compiled on over 300,000 people. Oh, in an Operation COINTELPRO with the FBI, It was over 170,000 people with individual files on over 7,000 United States citizens. Operation Chaos compiled a number of the CIA's illicit activities and was soon feeding information to the FBI's equally suspect COINTELPRO. Anti-war protesters and Black Party members were targeted while journalists were added to the CIA's payroll. That's Operation Mockingbird. Meanwhile, the CIA and the FBI went almost 400% over their budget, their annual budget, with these activities compared to what they told Congress they were spending. This is Operation Chaos, the CIA program that spied on Americans. I want you to do your best history on everything that we're going over right now. Learn it for yourself. The origins of the CIA's venture into domestic espionage date back to January 1959 when Fidel Castro assumed power over Cuba. Dwight D. Eisenhower was the president at that time. He responded with disdain even refusing to meet with the Cuban delegation in 1959. In 1960, Eisenhower took the CIA up on their recommendation to sound out and organize Cuban exiles who were fleeing after Castro's victory. According to the History of Operation Chaos by Vern Leung, since many of the exiles were considered wealthy, educated professionals who were looking for a sympathetic ear in the United States, the CIA started to actively recruit contacts to be used against Fidel Castro in the future. During this time, the CIA also started training and equipping Cuban exiles and bases in southern Florida and Panama and uh, Guatemala. 
At the time, however, the State Department claimed that they knew absolutely nothing about the training bases. Just like how uh, current FBI Director Ray knows nothing about this. You know what? There's something else that also happened during this time. Same time frame. You may have heard of it. Operation Northwoods. A proposed false flag operation against American citizens that originated from the U.S. Department of Defense and the United States government in 1962. See how that 60s time frame happened again? And also, this took place targeting Fidel Castro, but absolutely the irresponsible nature of this was 100% okay with killing Americans so that we could get into a war with Russia. That's my segue. Let's get back to this. Although <clears throat> this was all by definitions illegal by J. Edgar Hoover, uh, he still accepted it as a legitimate CIA function. That's a quote, legitimate CIA function. The CIA simply considered this activity an extension of their authorized infiltration of dissidents groups abroad. Because that's what they're supposed to do is work against anti-government dissidents abroad. Abroad means not a lady walking down the street. Abroad means not within the continental United States. But that's not what happened. In theory, the CIA's power is actually limited and they're prohibited from U.S. operations and aren't even allowed to surveil anyone considered a U.S. person, which includes legal immigrants, resident aliens, corporations, and citizens. However, in 1963, President Lyndon B. Johnson allowed the CIA director at that time, John McCone, to create a new branch of the CIA called the Domestic Operations Division, DOD. According to declassified documents on the, from the CIA, the mission of DOD, the Domestic Operations Division, was to exercise centralized responsibility for the direction, support, and coordination of clandestine operational activities of the clandestine services conducted, where? Well, within the United States against foreign targets. Neither the CIA, nor President Johnson, nor Director Hoover informed Congress about the creation of the DOD. According to the history of Operation Chaos, the very name of the branch mocked the explicit intent of Congress to prohibit CIA operations inside the United States. But if Congress didn't allow or didn't know about it, then they couldn't possibly regulate it or impede it. So one of the things that the new division of, of the CIA was involved with, one of the things that they were doing was using literature as an anti-communist weapon, subsidizing books, that the CIA wanted Americans to be reading, that's Operation what? Monarch. No. There you go. That's Operation Mockingbird. The division was headed by Charles Tracy Barnes, who oversaw the 1954 coup in Guatemala and included people such as E. Howard Hunt, one of the future conspirators of Watergate. In 1965, both President Lyndon B. Johnson and Director Hoover were certain that communist forces were manipulating student protests against the Vietnam War. And since Hoover assured Johnson that international communism was responsible, the CIA was asked to confirm the allegations. So, ergo, this is what I get to. The FBI considered MAGA and President Trump to be subverting the United States government. Not Constitution, not Bill of Rights, the government. And so, they manipulated people within their own protest, the MAGA protest. I've never been to a one, by the way. Not saying that I wouldn't have went, but I've just never been to them. 
manipulating people against the government. That was January 6th. We're looking at the same operation from 1961 to 1970 with COINTELPRO, Operation Chaos, Northwoods, Mockingbird, using the media. There's nothing new under the sun. Do your own research. Look at these documents. We've ran out of time. Oh, man. God is in control. Train, prep, pray. Stay frosty. The enemy is out there. Oh, by the way, one last thing before I leave. The Doug and Dave Intel Report at The Common Sense Show and at TheCommonSenseShow.tv. We're also on Heroes Nation. That's the Heroes Nation app. You can listen to uh, myself, The American Vindictus Show, on GSRadio.net at KYH Radio. That's 540 a.m. between 4 and 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube and on Rumble. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you subscribe, that helps build up my numbers and that eventually helps me to get paid just a little bit more. Uh, I think right now uh, my monthly earnings on YouTube are like $30. So if you want to help me, uh, whenever you see my stuff, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to it. I don't put out garbage and trash. I put out the best that I can put out. And so far, I think I'm doing pretty good. Uh, for the sponsors, Bob Griswold over at Ready Made Resources. Get what you need while you can. Night vision, tactical equipment, prepping. Bob Griswold is a one-stop shop. And if you need any help with prepping, readymaderesources.com. Give Bob a ring. You can go onto the website and you can find Bob's number and you can give him a call. Also, uh, if you want training, buy yours truly. The Active Shooter Awareness and Reaction Course is going to be happening Labor Day weekend, September 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. 12-hour days, fun and sun, out in Teleco Plains, Tennessee. We're going to be doing simunition training, active shooter training, a uh, little bit of uh, basic and advanced shooting. We're going to be doing team building, communications. Uh, we're going to be having fun. A lot of tactical training. We're going to have a lot of tactical medicine that's going to be uh, being taught there. And I promise you, you will leave with skills that you didn't go there with. Uh, then we have mountain-state-survival.com. If you need food and your basic camping equipment, man, I'm telling you, you better get it while you can. I, I don't like saying that and, and feeling like a hype guy. I don't like saying that and feeling like some sort of damn telemarketer. Uh, I'm saying that because... I am. I'm telling you right now, I'm prepping. I don't have the money to prep, but I'm doing it. Do not get caught lying down on this one, guys and gals. You can go to um, mountain-state-survival.com, enter Wrecker5, R-E-K-K-R-5, and get a 5% discount on your overall purchase. We also have MyPillow.com is sponsoring the Doug and Dave Intel Report. Thank you very much, MyPillow, for sponsoring us. Uh, all the things MyPillow are great. I have a bunch of their stuff. I like it. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm i very picky about what I what I do, and I'll tell you this much. I actually really like MyPillow. Uh, right now, I think they're, they're giving one of the biggest discounts that you can get uh, by using... Uh, mypillow.com backslash Hodges. If you go put that in your Internet Explorer, uh, you do mypillow.com backslash Hodges. That will give you probably one of the biggest discounts you've ever seen from MyPillow right now, and everything is on sale. So get it while you can. Uh, last but not least, My Patriot Supply. If you need bulk survival prep food, My Patriot Supply is a place you need to be shopping at right now before the government decides to buy it all out. Uh, I, I say if you want the food to go camping with, tastes really good, mountainstatesurvival.com 
and Bob Griswold are both great resources and they both sell the food that I personally use all the time. That's what I would say to go with and that's Peak Refuel. For the bulk food, for surviving the freaking apocalypse that's coming, My Patriot Supply, you can't beat it. You can't beat the prices. You can't beat the bulk amount of food. If you go through the American Vindictive Show, Dot com, go to my sponsors section of the page. You'll see uh, my Patriot Supply. Just click on it. Purchase what you need. Everything that you click on, or by clicking on it through my website uh, and making your purchases, that gets me a ten percent commission. So, and I almost never promote my Patriot Supply. I always forget to. I, I I'll tell you the reason why. It's not that I don't like the company. I do like the company. It's because I forget to promote stuff all the time because I just want to tell you the important information. But, you know, I've seen a bunch of these other shows and it's like you get five minutes of uh, investigative reporting or five minutes of an educational section and then you'll get 55 minutes of promos. And I hate that. And I know you hate that. So that's why I'm saving all this right here for the end. Uh, if you like this show, please... Send it to your friends, your family. I humbly ask you to prepare as a community, as a church, as a family. Don't get caught laying down on this one. We're, we're coming into some really, really turbulent times soon. All right, that's it. Done running my mouth. Train, prep, pray. See you next time.